All right, what I'm going to do today, since the gyro flow is now working on the thumb, I thought I would go through a bunch of the other settings that we can now set on the thumb during the configuration boot up. Uh, they've given us a lot of things that we can adjust. So I'm going to test those out. So this sheet here is the thumb.config file that you get when you download the latest version from the RunCam download site for the thumb. The thumb.comf configuration file needs to be put in the root directory and it's what defines for the firmware what setups it will operate from once you turn the camera on and do the recording. So this is kind of their their uh, instruction set. <clears throat> Basically the things with the semicolon, there's just informational. Those are kind of optional uh, lines to keep in the file. It's these lines without the semicolon that you need to keep. So first one is this firmware version, which we're operating on 2.1.0. The video settings that we can adjust. You can see if you have the video resolution equal some number, 0, 1, 2, you have three different choices there. The next one is the GyroFlow CSV file, which is to store the gyro data that you then import into GyroFlow. Uh, they're recommending that you use a high-speed card above 64 gigs, and you configure it to the 1080 50 frame per second rate, which is the setting of one. So that's tip, that's what I have been using. A couple things, other things we can adjust is the loop record interval. Basically, how many minutes before it'll create a new file. The default is zero, so I keep that on zero. The auto record switch, meaning if you turn it on, it'll automatically start recording when you power up. Otherwise, you will have to hit the, the normal on button there to start recording, which Generally is a better way to go. Some of the general settings, you've got brightness and exposure control. And as they say here, they usually set only one or the other. <clears throat> so for when it comes to the exposure, the, the default is six, but you can adjust it anywhere from zero to 12. So the, for the testing, I'm gonna set it on each of these five values here for the indoor test and I may repeat that on the out, uh, outside test. For brightness, similar thing. The default is 5 right in the middle. Uh, I can go from 0 to 10. I'm going to do 0, 3, 6, and 9. See how that turns out. Sharpness, you can also adjust. Default's 3. I'm going to do 1, 3, and 5 and see if I see any differences there. Contrast, uh, you can adjust 1, through five also. Default is in the middle on three. I'm going to do one, three, and five. See if I can see a difference. Saturation, which is kind of the color saturation. Default is right in the middle at three, but you can set it anywhere from one to five. So I'll do one, three, and five on the test. The white balance, you generally want to leave it on automatic, but you can also set it for daytime, cloudy, or basically inside lighting. So I'll test these three settings here. I have been running with the auto, generally speaking. And the power sader mode, you can have it so it automatically shuts off but after a certain amount of time. I'm gonna leave that off. Okay, let's get started.
Alright, so you saw the results of the test. There's a couple things I wanted to go over here. One thing I did test also was uh, on the video settings here, I measured the bit rate of these three different formats and they all came out right around 18 megabits per second. So even though the 30 frames per second should have been a higher data rate, it actually isn't. They all came out pretty close to 18 megabits per second on those. I was going to test the uh, white balance. I've had it on auto the whole time, but I really, you know, <clears throat> if you're going to fly outside, you could play on those settings. I didn't test this inside one. So that's one thing I said I was going to do, and I decided it wasn't really worth doing at this moment. I might test that at some time in the future. When it comes to the device itself, a couple things that I have found and other people have found out. This cover doesn't stay on real good. It's very easy for it to pop off and get lost. Um, I made a mount that wraps all the way around and so it does hold that cover on. You might consider doing something like that. This SD card needs to be seated good. If it's out even just slightest amount You'll see this red light on here blinking like crazy. That means that the SD card's not seated all the way. I've had it even in after a little crash, it will uh, not uh, stay seated. So that's kind of a deficiency. <clears throat> I also had an, the ND filter on here. The these are this comes off so easily. These this lens and the ND filter. So. Uh, I lost it. It popped right off in a crash. Never did find it. So there, that's not held on real good. So just something to be aware of there. Otherwise, it's been reliable. It's uh, being 18 megabits per second. It doesn't really give you a real great image, but it's, it's very lightweight, and so you can fly it on small little whoops like this for indoor and maybe some sporty outdoor stuff. So not bad for what you pay for it. Anyway, hope this has been helpful. Have a good time. Catch you later.